Sorry. I'd like to call the Tuesday, July 21st, 2015 Ordinance Committee meeting to order. Uh, Councillor Katarina is here, Councillor Blaze, Town Manager Hall, and Tracy is here for notes. Um, item number three, approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. moved. Second. Approved. Approved. Yes. Item number four, report on parking at Higgins Beach from myself. Um, before I open this, we talked last time, I told you that we'd open it to the public. Um, I'd like to keep it relatively short. Um, we'll do 30 minutes at this point, so we'll go until 10 o'clock um, because I know the other counselors have some things that they uh, would like to say. So if there's anybody that would like to speak, please go to the podium, state your name and address. If not, we'll move on. Paul Rising, 15 Shipwreck Road, Higgins Beach. Um, to my recollection, uh, when the uh, parking places were first established, which was around the time I think that the town bought the parking lot and uh, built the changing station, uh, it was envisioned, in my mind anyway, as uh, short-term parking for strolling the beach, walking your dog, sunbathing, going for a swim, all short term. And I guess we'd also include surfing. Uh, my concern is one thing that wasn't envisioned, which is using park vehicles as changing stations. Uh, the open doors, as it is now, as I experience it, walking down the sidewalk, uh, in changing, the doors are open, it obstructs the sidewalk. It, uh, if it's on the, other, on the driver's side, it, it also affects traffic. Also, whether or not it is legal, is it appropriate? How does that affect other people using the beach? Uh, on no street that I know of, is it usual and customary for people to change their clothes in a parked vehicle, uh, at least not on a regular basis? There are other alternatives to changing your clothes after you've come off the beach. You can change on the beach, or there is a changing station uh, near the parking lot, uh, which the Surfers Association has contributed funds. So I ask that we really look at that, and I would appreciate if that were not allowed. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Vin Bobasi at 22 Bayview Avenue in Scarborough. I had sent a letter on to you, and basically in that very brief comment I made is, was a comment that Chief Moulton had made related to parking at Higgins Beach. It says, uh, basically, if it's, uh, some of what you see is not, some of it is not what you want to take place in your own front lawn. And the question to you is, if it's not suitable for Chief Moulton's front lawn, why is it acceptable for the residents and guests of Higgins Beach. And I would appreciate a response as to what your feelings are on that subject. If, if, police, if our police chief feels that way, can we get an answer in terms of which episode? Well, I can't speak for the chief of police. I was, oh, in, that, I was in that meeting. Yeah, you spoke to him and asked his position. I, you're certainly right. I did speak to him. And, what did and you I've spoken to him numerous times over this issue. And so what is your position on I don't. I didn't get a response from him. I didn't ask him. What is him. your position on this, may I ask? Is I didn't make the statement, sir. But you asked him what his position was on I this. I didn't ask him about that statement. No, you didn't. I'm not going to answer for him. Well, if you, you would like it, I, I know Chief Moulton very well, me? sir. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not arguing. I'll call like you out of answer. order, and you can leave the room if you want to have an argument, and we can discuss this after. I will tell you. Chief Moulton will answer any questions that you give to him. He is very responsive. At least that is the history that I have heard from many people in this town. If you would like an answer on that subject, please email him or call him, and he will respond to you. Is there anyone else? Uh, good morning. I'm Gifford Reed. I live at 23 Houghton Street. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of Higgins Beach by now. My cottage is uh, roughly opposite the uh, clubhouse that's there. Um, again, I'm Gifford Reed, 23 Houghton Street. <coughs> I've been attending uh, activities at Higgins Beach since 1965. Um, 
It wasn't Kelly Lane at that time. It was uh, five little cottages, uh, which have been beautifully expanded as is the area. Um, and I've been following the activities of the beach that take place. Excellent improvements. The seawall, for instance, a benefit of everybody who attends the beach and retaining the beach facilities as far as the shoreline is concerned. Sidewalks, an excellent safety feature, which we didn't have for many, many years. Um, parking, I'll get to that. Seaweed removal, um, that's taken place every Thursday morning uh, by residents of the beach primarily. And uh, the town is very helpful. They come down and pick up the seaweed after it's raked so that we don't lose sand or anything of that nature. Um, the beach, and it's for the benefit of everybody uh, that's there. My main concern is the, um, is the parking lot. There are very, very few beaches that have the facilities uh, that Higgins Beach has. It's an excellent parking lot. We have excellent changing restroom facilities. Um, it was expanded beyond its original scope. Um, my guess would be, and I don't know exactly, you people in the council would know how much over a million dollars has been invested in that. I know the land cost around 650000 and then on top of that you'd have engineering costs, paving costs, the beautiful new facilities that we have for everybody that's in town. My concern really is why do they have to have parking along Bayview adjacent to the beach when they don't have it, as far as I know, anybody, anyplace else in Scarborough? Um, I haven't verified that, but I've done some research and found that that's not the case. Very, very few towns, any place, have on-beach parking. Um, I think a lot of the problems that the beach residents and or people in general and you, the council, are faced with could be eliminated very easily. Take the general public parking away from Bayview Avenue, meaning on-beach parking. This consists of approximately six parking spots. Enforcement of the time limit is not possible. I walked, or at least it doesn't take place. I walk the beach I don't know how many times a day, and you'll see the same car sitting in the same place for multiple hours. My suggestion would be take the on-street parking at the beach for the general public off and make them park in the parking lot, allow the handicapped or those people who would like to visit the beach to look at the seagulls, watch the ocean, and all of the other activities, provide parking facilities for them so that they can enjoy that. The number of steps from where my cottage is to the ramp leading to the beach is only 10 steps short of the exit from the parking lot onto Ocean Avenue. Now, my legs are short, so somebody else may be able to walk faster than I do. But the point is, that facility is not being used to the dollars invested for the good of the general public at Higgins Beach, not just Higgins Beach residents. I doubt if there's very few of us that live down there, fortunately, that use that parking lot. We don't have a need for it. So it's for the general public, and I think that the town should seriously, the governing bodies of the town, excuse me, <clears throat> of the town should seriously consider <clears throat> removing general parking from that area and go back, not go back, but contain it into the parking lot, and uh, you would eliminate a lot of the problems that have been spoken to time and time and time again. You've been given pictures and all the rest of the stuff. All that could be eliminated if people were required to use this million dollar plus parking facilities we have along with the fine changing facilities. Thank you. Thank you.
Next. Anybody? Yeah, go ahead. Hey there, I'm Melissa Gates. I'm the Northeast Regional Manager with the Surfrider Foundation. First, I just want to start out by thanking Councilwoman St. Clair. Um, she has assembled an ad hoc committee after the February hearing of this committee. Um, in that committee are several people in this room, um, Dick LaRue, Maureen, Barbara, Barbara, uh, Roger. So there are folks from all sides of the fence here. Um, some of us think that changing in and out of a wetsuit at a beachfront parking space is acceptable beach behavior. Some, um, as you all know, find that unacceptable. And that's where we've had a sticking point, really, in our ad hoc committee discussions over the last six months. We did have a meeting July 16th, um, not too long ago, where we had civil discourse about proposals put forth by all different uh, members of the committee. And we arrived at a consensus agreement to try um, to put out permanent signage speaking to beach use etiquette. The Surfrider Foundation offered to share this information widely, as far and wide as we could. Um, we were at the point of offering next steps from everyone in the committee to um, offer out language for the sign. And it was a negotiation in that, personally, I don't think changing in and out of a wetsuit with a bathing suit underneath is inappropriate at a beach. It's just normal beach behavior. Similarly, I don't think it's inappropriate to use a fob to lock or unlock your car door or to open and close your car door. Um, but I totally understand that as someone who may live right adjacent to these parking spots, that such behavior may be problematic. And that's where we found this negotiation on July 16th in that I'm not really willing to tell people beyond what's lawful, um, which is using the beach, parking in a one-hour parking space for one hour, and so on, to change their behavior because of a difference in what's acceptable behavior at a beach. What I am willing to do is share with the, everyone that I know, and all surfers and kayakers and beach users um, that are part of the Surfrider Foundation email list, that it is offensive to certain people who live there and to suggest that people use the wash houses if they have time to do so for changing. And that's where our negotiation came to a point of. So I was very surprised to learn last night at 8 p.m. of a proposed ordinance coming before this committee today and to hear that other members of our ad hoc committee have actually come away from our meeting after agreeing to this very common sense, community-minded first step of permanent signage speaking to beach use etiquette and promoting that, um, come away from that telling other members of the council different things and saying they weren't actually in favor of that when everybody at that meeting said they would try this in good faith. So I think here today we need to keep in mind that Limiting hours of access to parking right adjacent to the beach <clears throat> from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. dramatically impacts and reduces public access to the beach for people who work. Higgins Beach is a beautiful spot. Everybody here knows that. We all want it to be wonderful for everybody, homeowners, beach users, everybody. And I think this approach that we came to on July 16th is a really great first step to try to move ahead of that before even giving it a shot to jump into another ordinance to restrict changing and to leave that up to the discretion of the police department, whether or not removing a shawl is against the local rules, whether or not um, you know, taking off your sweatshirt when you're jogging on the beach is acceptable. I mean, that, that type of behavior is commonplace. We shouldn't be seeking to regulate it. We should instead be looking at First, trying this approach we came to in committee and not limiting access to the people who use Higgins Beach before work hours and they can't get there after 7 a.m. and get to work at 8. They can't use this paid parking lot uh, and travel the six or seven minutes down to the beach each way. That dramatically cuts into their hour of beach use. I mean, if you're looking at 15, 20 minutes of just walking back and forth and paying $10 a day that adds up, not everybody can afford that. So we're looking at limiting access to people who are not financially able to pay for that parking lot every day. We're looking right. at, I'm, I'm not gonna do this today.
So I would appreciate that if everybody respects anybody who's speaking, regardless of what side the person is on, please, I ask you to let everybody speak. Thank you. So anyway, back to um, this committee, the ad hoc committee that we've formed. If everybody there was entered into that committee in good faith, then we should be all on the same page right now because everyone there was in agreement that this permanent signage was a good first step and we'd be willing to try it out and that we would all offer out language suggestions for what that sign would say and then at our next meeting scheduled for July 30th that we would talk about how to assess whether it's working or not and what might be needed down the road if it's proven not to be working. So I hope that we can come back to that and that our six months of work in this committee aren't just flatly rejected and ignored, and bulldozed over, um, because the people who are able to be here at a 9.30 a.m. weekday meeting can actually be here to speak out about noise or whatever else is um, offensive to them. Also a reminder that the police department has spoken to us. Chief Moulton actually said they are working to make sure that enforcement of illegal activities are taking place, that if people are opening their doors into traffic or into the pedestrian right of way, that they're being ticketed. If people are drinking in public, urinating in public, all of the other really offensive behaviors that are actually illegal are being addressed. So what we're talking about again are these standard beach use behaviors that some people find offensive and some don't. And how do we come to an agreement on that? We've offered a suggestion, and everybody at the ad hoc committee was in agreement with it. I hope you will consider allowing that group <coughs> suggestion. Thanks. Go ahead. Uh, Glenis Chabot, Houghton Street. Um, the uh, parking lot um, at the beach is open in the summer at 5.30 a.m., and it is free until 9 a.m. Um, there also it is free um, after about 4 p.m. So um, there is no cost with parking at that time. The other thing is we already have a town sign on Bayview uh, near the parking area that uh, reminds people that changing and restroom facilities are in the parking lot, and that has been up for several years. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. And the committee that was meeting um, over the six months um, has had a total of three meetings. Thank you. Anybody else? Good morning. I'm Sue Naden. We have a cottage at uh, 17 Shipwreck Road, and I've been part of the ad hoc committee here that we've had formed, which we've been working since January. Um, I just wanted to comment a few, on a few things that Melissa said about what we've been doing in the group and the last meeting. At the last meeting, we were told that the only way we could have any changes for this summer were to work on this, um, this sign and, and verbiage for the sign. We were told that anything beyond that that would be a permanent fix for future years would take a year and a half to two to get through a council decision. So that's why I think we agreed on this temporary fix to try this summer, just to hope we could make some difference this summer. Anyone else? Good morning, I'm Karen Haskell at 21 Cliff Street. When I drive down Ocean Avenue to the beach, it, it's a beautiful vista. But when I also drive down to make a right or left on Bayview, my whole focus is on the safety of people because there's so much activity down there. So I'm frankly puzzled why all this time and energy has been placed into details about whether you can dress or undress, um, enforcement, um, the marking of tires, when we have a sufficient parking area that has been uh, discussed as the town supporting financially, I, to me the simplest solution is that you increase access for the handicapped and everyone else uses the parking lot. 
It's a block and a half to walk. There's free time at the beginning and the end of the day. So for the limited number of spots that we are providing, with the chaos that it is causing, I'm simply totally <laughs> puzzled and buffaloed by it. My recommendation would be to increase handicap parking, which I think all of us would be very happy to do, and then to simply say everyone uses the parking lot with the changing rooms, and all of these problems go away. Thank you. Anybody else? You have about 10 minutes, so if you do want to speak, you should probably go up. Good morning. I'm Brian Tolley, 210 Broad Turn Road. Um, I've been surfing at Higgins Beach since 1999 or so, and it's certainly grown in popularity since then, and, and uh, obviously things have changed dramatically since then. Um, I'm one of the people that gets up early and goes to the beach, and uh, uh, unfortunately I've been down there when the parking lot should have been open and it hasn't been open, um, so I park on the street. and it's, it's No one else, well I shouldn't say no one, but there's been many mornings when not many other people are even awake. Um, when I'm out there and some other people are out there enjoying the beach. And I don't personally see where this is causing such commotion. Um, maybe I'm not witnessing what you guys are witnessing, but you know, I'm part of the surf surfing community and I'm there a lot. And I really haven't seen any atrocious behavior when I've been down there. Um, not to say that it doesn't exist, but uh, I don't know as if reducing uh, an hour of parking is going to change any of that. I really doubt it will. Um, and I don't believe that removing parking access <coughs> to the general public uh, along the front ab there uh, would be acceptable in my opinion. Just about every other town in Maine has um, some public access, uh, Fortune's Rocks, York Beach. Um, there's a number of others that actually have street front parking available to the general public. Unfortunately, not all of us are lucky enough to live within walking distance of the beach, and our only way of ac accessing the beach is to actually drive there. <clears throat> so um, I would love to continue to have that opportunity to participate in Maine's public beaches and public beach access. Thank you. Um, Maureen Byrne, 6 Morning Street. I don't have anything prepared. And I, f I feel uncomfortable about going against my neighbors. But I have lived um, right on the beach for six years. And I know people have said over and over all these things that they see that are, are you know, just obstructions in, on Bayview. I have not seen that. I have a, a huge picture window all across the west side of my house, upstairs and downstairs. We have the decks. Honestly, I've never seen anyone um, drinking by their cars. I've never seen um, tailgating with a hibachi. Um, I walk my dog on that sidewalk frequently. I have <coughs> had no problems with getting by, um, being obstructed in any way. I know they do put their surfboards alongside on the fence sometimes. Um, and everybody is fairly pleasant. I've never had one encounter that's been bad. Um, I just feel that it's unreasonable to take away, we're talking about 11 spots for the general public of Scarborough who all pay taxes just like we do down at Higgins. Why should that be taken away? Um, and what else did I want to say? Oh, I'm part of the committee. Um, that we've been trying to deal with this problem. And m one of my suggestions was to have it known or somehow make it so that the surfers or whoever is parked on Bayview wants to go and change once they get out of the water, they can go up to the parking lot for free. We'll have some spaces and they can go and you know sit on their, their towels so in their wet car, in their wet suits, and change and have a nice hot shower and then go home. I mean, I thought that was worth a try to see if that would work. And also um, putting up signs for um, more better beach etiquette, just so people are more aware of what would um, 
be nicer behavior instead of just um, doing these inappropriate behaviors, which some people feel is. Because it, for me, I moved down there in permanently in 19, um, 2009 and lost my train of thought. Oh, anyway, um, I expect this behavior. It's a beach. I, I, I don't feel that, um, well, urinating is against the law. Okay, have it enforced. Over, over usage or the parking time, call a cop. You know, if, if any of these things, if the, any of these issues are bothering you, call the police and at least it's on record. If maybe they don't get there in time, but at least you've, you know, expressed your view. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> this will probably be our last speaker. We're almost at 10. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm uh, Philip LaRue, uh, 37 Vesper Street. I'm on the committee. I am requesting that you people allow the committee to continue looking into this and not make any rash decisions today. I think it's totally out of character. I didn't find out about this until 9 o'clock this morning. I'm on vacation. So here I am. You know, if not, I'd be at work. So please let the committee continue to work on this situation and come up with some great, great ideas. Thank you. Thank you. We get two minutes. Anybody else? Anybody want to grab the two minutes? No? Okay. We're going to close the public comments. Um, <clears throat> it says that it's going to be a report from me, but I think what I'm going to do is um, I believe there's an amendment that wants to be presented. I'm going to have that amendment presented and then I will give um, my small amount of feedback and then let um, you guys do what you would like to do. So is there an amendment on the table? Uh, Madam Chair, I have actually have two amendments. Go ahead. Uh, the First Amendment, and we should take them up separately yep. if you don't mind. No. Nope. First one is motion to amend Chapter 612, <coughs> the Town of Scarborough Ordinance, creating rules and regulations for the use of parks and recreation facilities by adding a new section as follows. Section 19, dressing. Dressing, undressing, and the changing of clothes are not permitted within the limits of any park or beach, except in the bathhouse or other structures suitable for this purpose. This does not apply to children five years or younger. The remainder of the ordinance is to be renumbered. And I have something I'd like to say about it. Um, do we have a second first, and then we'll have yes. a second. Yes, okay, second. fine. Second, go ahead. Okay. Um, in the interest of moving something forward, Councillor Blaze and I um, discussed presenting this. This is uh, actually, we've lifted it directly from the town of York. York is, if you're not familiar with, has an extensive number of beaches. I used to live down there. Um, and it is helpful to have an ordinance on the book. We're not looking for the police to be standing around waiting to catch people. But if, in fact, there's egregious behavior, it's helpful to have an ordinance on the books in order that it can be enforced. Um, I would remind people that this Ordinance Committee does not have the power to change this ordinance. We're just asking that this be moved up to the Town Council for further discussion. Um, and that's my, those are my comments at the moment. Councilor Lees. Um, I totally agree with this. Um, we're, not, we're not proposing to eliminate any parking spaces whatsoever. We just don't want the behavior of changing clothes to be done out in public, in front of some people's windows, uh, in front of people walking down around on the streets. Um, we have a great facility up in the parking lot for changing. There's no reason why people, anybody that comes down and parks down at the beach to go surfing, has got to go by the parking facility. There's no reason why they can't pull in there, change their clothes, put on their wetsuit, get back in their car and drive down there, park and go surfing. When they get done, they go back up and change. That's all we're asking people to do. 
We're not eliminating parking spaces. So uh, I'm 100% behind this. This is a start. We have to try something. We want to try something now. And we kind of feel that uh, this is a beginning, and we'll see see whether it works. If it doesn't work, then we'll have to try something else. And as Councillor uh, Katerina said, it's not our decision. It's the town council's decision. So we're merely just bringing this forward to the town council. That's all I have and, to say. And if I could add well, just yep. one other quick comment, and I. What we're doing here, I don't know if you've ever heard the uh, saying, uh, the way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So we're trying to take a little tiny bite at the moment, okay? Um, I'm not going to support this amendment. Uh, we've, for numerous reasons, uh, two of which I've spoken to two police chiefs who have expressed major issues with the York Ordinance and how to enforce it. Um, including the chief of police in Scarborough. Uh, we went over that in our meeting. Um, I'm not saying that I don't agree with some parts of it. I don't think anybody should be changing or naked in front of someone's window. I think that's unacceptable. Um, but I think this amendment is too broad. I think it's going to create multiple issues. Um, I do agree with what Councillor Katerina is saying in the sense of taking small bites. Um, that was what we discussed in our meeting. That was why we came up with the signage. Um, we, the whole point of that was that we thought we could get signage in place for six weeks. That six weeks would give us time to see if it was doing any good, if it was making, making any changes. And if after six weeks it gave us more ammunition to come back and say that signage did not help. That was the whole point behind us asking for the signage for six weeks. Um, obviously, some people left that meeting and misconstrued what was said, um, and that to me is just, uh, I'm going to leave it at that, um, but I'm not going to support that amendment for that reason, and I will ask once it goes to the um, council level, because um, obviously it will at this point, uh, that there is a legal opinion on that. So let's vote on your First Amendment. Yeah, that's okay. Um, all those in favor? Councillor Katarina's amendment. That's two, Tracy. Opposed? One. Okay. You got a second one? Yep. I Go have ahead. a second amendment. The motion to amend Section 25, Parking Restrictions, Section A, Parking Restrictions, Subsection 2. Higgins Beach is noted by underlined text and deleting the text shown in strike over type is shown below. Section 2, Higgins Beach, amended January 19th, 2011, amended, uh, excuse me, February 16th, 2011. Section B, subsection 2, one hour parking shall be allowed from, and we're striking 6 a.m. and changing it to 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. in designated parking spaces on the ocean side only of Bayview Avenue from the end of the drop-off zone to Morning Street from September 16th to April 30th. The one-hour parking shall not be in effect, and that is in the form of a motion. Okay, second. Second. Okay, go ahead. Any discussion? Uh, again, um, in, uh, I'll remind people that I spend a lot of time at Higgins Beach myself. Uh, my mother-in-law uh, lives down there, and I've been down there in early mornings too. I know what it's like also to live in congested areas. Uh, when there's extraneous noise, uh, what we I'm going to have uh, Councilor Blaze address this, but we're actually aligning this up with noise ordinance uh, as far as you know what's allowed. I don't think taking an hour away in the morning in that area is should excuse me <coughs> should be an issue because as mentioned, there is free parking in the parking lot. Um, and it opens at 5.30, and I believe they don't start charging till when I'm looking at the town manager? 9. 9, Nine o'clock. 9 a.m. So this isn't, shouldn't be an undue uh, burden on anybody. Can you, um, can you, I'm sorry, before you go, can I just, I just want to ask one question. Yeah. Can you clarify, please, um, where exactly you're asking for that to happen? It's in Is it all parking here? pieces? No, no, not in here. I know we're in here. Are you saying all parking spots down there? Or just on one side? I'm going to defer to the town manager. 
I believe it, uh, the way this is constructed, uh, it addresses all of the, I forget how many in total there are, but About all 11. spaces on the ocean side of Bayview would be affected yeah, by Yeah, so it's on the ocean amendment. side only. Okay. Okay. So I'm, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Thank you. I'm, a, I'm in agreement with this. Um, a lot of people have complained about the noise down there. Um, I drove down there the other morning at about quarter after five, and there were already five or six cars down there and people changing, and they were talking, and so on and so forth. And that's even before the allowable time. Um, so I'm in favor of this. And again, the parking lot is only a three or four minute walk to the ocean. It's not a 15 or 20 minute walk. It's three or four minutes. And it's, it's available to people, have people use the parking lot, use the changing facilities, and walk down, like the majority of people that surf down there. Most of the people that surf down there use the parking lot. We'd just like to have everybody use the parking lot. That's all. So I'm going to support this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not going to support this. Um, I Shocker. Um, I have heard from too many people that that is their only time to go down there. I, um, I am in agreement to an extent with Councillor Blaze that that parking lot needs to be used and utilized more. We built it and put it down there for a reason. Um, but I also know um, there are people that have issues and, and don't use it for certain reasons. Um, so at this point, I'm not going to support this. It will go to the council level, obviously, because there is enough movement for it. Um, I would like to say to the people that were that were part of um, that ad hoc, that ad hoc committee, it was never an actual ad hoc committee. It was it was a group of citizens that took time out of their day and time <coughs> to meet with us and try to figure out this actually could have died on the floor six months ago, and we decided to not do that. Um, and I would like to apologize to those people that took that time, um, that honestly came to those meetings and put their time and effort, their honest effort into it, and I'm sorry that this has come to this. Um, that being said, let's have a vote. All those in favor of Councillor Katarina's amendment? Two. All those opposed? One, Tracy. And we'll move on. Item number five, discussion on fireworks. So the, um, I'm going to start, Tom, and then I don't know, I know I'm sure both counselors have, um, would like to weigh in on this because I know that everyone has a difference of opinion, um, or not a necessarily difference of opinion, but have different experiences with this. Um, this, just for a quick overview, this came about because of multiple complaints from people um, and their concern. Uh, actually, honestly, it came from some firefighters that lived um, in a small area, more probably like a beach community, um, probably like Higgins Beach, where fireworks would go up and they would rain down on top of people's homes. And it was um, nerve-wracking to them, for them to see that. And they were literally, they felt like, and I will quote them, they felt like they were sitting there waiting for either someone to lose a body part, which sadly somebody <laughs> did. Um, luckily, it was not in the town of Scarborough. It's not funny. I'm not laughing at that. I'm just saying that that was actually quoted by one of them, um, and then unfortunately it happened. Um, or they were, or they were waiting to get the call that they were going to have to go fight a fire in their neighborhood, which, which is nerve-wracking in itself, especially when you're a firefighter. Um, I know from from personal experience, and I did share this with the other counselors. Um, the night before, actually it's even in the complaints that I saw, um, the night before 4th of July, on July 4th at 2 a.m., um, I was actually home by myself. I'm glad my small child was not there. Um, I, fireworks went off. And these were not small fireworks that I think you can go buy, and I am not, I am not a fireworks expert, but these were what I believe to be industrial fireworks. You probably could have seen them on the other side of Scarborough. Um, I did not place the call, but I know three of my neighbors did place a call. It was at 2 o'clock in the morning, um, which is obviously, to me, unacceptable, but um, it was, it's one complaint for me. So I'm not, that in itself is not, in my opinion, enough to change a whole ordinance. 
But I wanted to bring it forward because I wanted to get more opinions on the subject. I wanted the other counselors to weigh in. I think the ordinance is kind of broad in a way. Um, I think that there, I think this ordinance was a, was a wonderful first step. I think that it came about with a lot of work um, and I wasn't there at the time, Tom, but I know that they there was a lot of thought put into it. Mm -hmm. But I think now that we have a couple years into it, there's more feedback um, from a, some of the residents. And I also want to say, again, for the second time, this has nothing to do with two of the businesses in Scarborough that sell fireworks. I'm thrilled that we have those businesses. I am not asking to ban fireworks. I'm not asking for those businesses to go away. I'm, I'm happy that they employ people. Um, I'm glad that they have space in Scarborough. I just think that there needs to be a little bit more um, into this as to where fireworks can, can be let off. Um, I did speak at length to a woman, um, and I did forward that email mm -hmm. to my fellow counselors. I'm not going to read the whole email, mm -hmm. but one thing that she said that stuck out to me was her family has been coming up here for 25 years. And they actually started talking about, well, maybe we should just not come up until after the 4th because of all of the fireworks that were going off. She, she had made a comment that there were four or five instances at Memorial Park, different yeah. people letting off fireworks. I guess she's down in that area, mm -hmm. right. Um, I don't have confirmation on that, but she actually she sent us a very, very detailed um, impressive email as she's obviously been keeping track for quite some time um, of the issue and she's got a real concern for the safety of her neighbors and herself. So I'm going to stop there because I think I've probably rattled on enough. Um, uh, I would love to hear what uh, my fellow counselors have to say. Go ahead, Jean Marie. Um, I was at Hagen's speech. <laughs> Uh, July 3rd, the, n the night of July 3rd, and I honestly thought I was in uh, Baghdad or someplace like that, honest to God. Um, I li for those of you who don't know, I live out in the middle of the Willy Wags uh, on one f off from 114, and we have, you know, lot sizes, eight acres, yeah. three acres, you know, large, that. large, large acreage. So I have a neighbor who likes to shoot off fireworks inappropriately from time to time, but it's not the same as it was at Higgins Beach where, I mean, honestly, they were just going off all over the place. And I'm one of these crazy people. I have a, a bad startle reflex, so I'm walking down the road going, huh? Huh? <laughs> you know, every five minutes mm -hmm. uh, taking a walk down towards the beach that evening. I don't know. This is such a sticky, it is another one. It really it's another is. sticky wicket. Um, my concerns are... And, and I'll be honest, I was opposed to allowing fireworks in Scarborough, period, mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, trying to walk that back yeah. is going to be difficult. However, I have concerns about dense areas. Mm -hmm. I have concerns about beach areas because of uh, the birds, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, because it scares off, it can scare off terns and plovers and whoever else is living down there on the beach. Um, I have major concerns where I live of fire danger because my neighbor sometimes shoots things off when it's, you know, a high red fire. That's the only time I call the cops on him. Now he knows who's calling the cops. Yeah. He watches his stuff. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, so I, I don't know. I'm just throwing out, I think there are concerns, legitimate concerns about fireworks, and I do know that they leave a lot of trash around. I mean, they go up into the air. And then they scatter, if you're using those, those rocket things that go up, and they do scatter um, debris over an area, and you can't really control the area where you're shooting them off from because of the wind and this and that and the other thing. So that's where I am. So I don't know. If we had something to do with density, maybe, of course, it would be hard not allowing it at the beaches because you have a lot of people from away who are renting down there and they don't know the rules, but that's still not an excuse. And the rental agencies could have, you know, ordin you know <laughs> reminders like we do on the piping plover rules. Um, anyway, that's my thought. Yeah, it's tricky. Go ahead. Do you have anything you must... Yeah. yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I assumed you had something to add. <laughs> we put this on hold a while yeah. back because of... Last year. Potential, well, earlier this year. Yeah. 
Yeah, and because of potential. I'm sorry, two years ago. Well, when it was before when you. I'm sorry, my bad. This year we put yes. it on hold. Yes. Because of potential uh, state laws. Yes. Right, and they didn't do anything. They did. Right. They did nothing. On the so state now level. it's fair game. Right. Right. Um, I agree. I, I, there's living down at Hagen's Beach and having fireworks go off, and I wake up the next morning, I've got debris all over my roof. It's kind of scary. It, yeah. Um, I'm a little bit surprised. I just looked at this, the ordinance, and I thought yeah. the ordinance said that only fireworks could be set off on your own property. Yeah. Well, set off is the clue. You can set them off in your yard, but you can't control where they go. Yeah, but people are that. setting them off all over the place. That's yeah. the oh, true. That's you know true. I mean? Yeah, in the and parking lot. It, it, it doesn't say yeah. that in here. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, if you could direct my, my recollection was it was your own property or on someone else's uh. property with their permission, as I recall. But um, I, I don't see yeah. it. But I anyway. didn't see that, Tom. I read it last night. Where was it so <laughs> um, The other thing, too, and I know it's a smaller yeah. amount of people, but there's been a lot of talk about people with PTSD. Oh, um, right. right. I know I forwarded something to Jean Marie, yeah. and I know it's a smaller amount of people, but those are also people that we have to be concerned about. We have a lot of veterans in this town, and that's a real, it's a real that's issue a um, for them to hear things like that. It's not, it's not a small issue. I mean, this can send them into a real spiral. Um, and so I know, I know it's a very, in this town, maybe we have three or four veterans that it may affect, but we still have to keep those people in mind. They're still citizens of Scarborough. Um, and that was something that we did hear about when we were first talking. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, um, I did not see in here that it had to be on your property. Yeah, well, there's outright exclusions. It cannot happen on public property beaches or parks. Um, yeah, I, by my quick read here, I, I don't see any specific language addressing other pro private property, but nor am I aware that that's necessarily a problem. I presume if it's happening on private property, the permission of the owner is <coughs> what that is, has been granted. Right. We're still letting them off on the beach or It's never been allowed rental. on the beach and it's not allowed on the beach currently. But we know historically it's happened. It happens. It happens. It's happened. I mean, I saw it when I was it's down happening. at Higgins. I saw some go off that I, yeah. I'm assuming were in the, on the beach area. Oh but, yeah. But, uh, uh -huh. My recollection is when the conversation happened, it was widely appreciated by all that it's always happened at the beach. Never been lawful, mind you, but it's always happened. Oh, and yeah. Obviously, it continues. I think part of my concern too is I know that we got the letter from Chief Moulton, and uh, you know. This comes back to, and I, this is not a, I'm not criticizing our police department. I think they do a wonderful job. But this is like the third or fourth thing that I've seen where, where are the, where are the fines? You know, I mean, you, you, we go back to the dog issue. And, you know, we talked a lot about fining people and, and if there was more enforcement and, you know, the plover issue, and I've talked to numerous people who have said, there's been a couple people that have gotten tickets and they are not going anywhere near those birds anymore. Um, you know, it just, it kind of frustrates me when I read things. Um, and I'm not gonna, I, I, this, what happened at my house, and my house is listed here, was right at the end of my driveway. I heard what happened, and this is saying that their the activities were, un, they were unable to locate the subjects. I heard them talking to the police department. Well, so I, that's frustrating to me to read that. Oh, this is a report. Frank, I, I think your comments, forgive me for saying this, are a bit unfair. Um, y you probably better than I know in law enforcement, you Absolutely. need to have evidence be able to yes. issue a fine or, or, or worse than that. And I suspect, I know from casual conversations with them, this is a, a real vexing problem because yeah, almost sure. never are they able to respond and actually see the act being committed. Mm -hmm. right. And so... Uh, we're doing the best we can. I think it was widely observed that this is a real bugaboo for the police department. And in probably a large part, a lot of communities chose not to get down this road. That's yeah. right. That being one of the very reasons that yeah. it's almost impossible to put uh, two and two together and issue a fine or citation. Well, and we're, we're short a police officer. 
Well, plus they have a huge well, area. Yeah, they have 54 they have square miles to, you know, a, a firework is up and gone in a matter of seconds, literally. Hmm. So I, I, I understand your point. I, I just, I don't necessarily agree that it's a fair criticism of the police department. I'm not, what I, I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm not necessarily criticizing them. I'm just saying that, once again, to me, you know, when I talk to people about this, the first thing they ask me is, what's the enforcement of this? Is there any enforcement? Because to some people, that's the, that's the end-all, be-all. If we can get enforcement, it solves the whole problem. We don't have to touch anything. And I know that that's not always the case. I think but that's before it comes out, I felt it was important to say that, we, that we're looking at that part of it. It's, it's not, we're not just looking at the ordinance and, you no, know. No, don't misunderstand. We're, we're certainly not turning our, our head to this, but I think it was widely acknowledged, and I think we need to continue to acknowledge that it's virtually impossible to enforce unless you're right there and see it, see the act committed. And that's, that would be a unique set of circumstances. I know in communities that so ban uh, fireworks, they still have fireworks. I mean, they mm -hmm. still get shot off. I mean, yeah. I've seen them in South yeah. Portland. I spend time on Peaks Island, which is technically Portland. People shooting off fireworks, so. Do you know who, Tom? <coughs> I don't know. Do you know who around us? It's illegal. Not fireworks, do you know? Portland, Portland. Uh, the OB? majority of greater Portland communities do not allow, not allow consumer right. fireworks. Mm -hmm. I, we, we did a survey back at the time. I can, no, I can I, freshen that up again. But curious. my recollection is the vast majority of greater Portland communities did not choose to allow consumer fireworks. We're one of the only ones. Okay. And I hate taking stuff away from people. Oh, no. I, no, you know, I, I mean... I, I did get a couple emails from people that are like, this is a family tradition. Um, we live on four acres. To me, right. four acres is a big difference from a small plot in a, in a small neighborhood. That's where, that's where the, my issue is. You know, and you, and you don't want to shut down those family traditions. I've got a neighbor two houses down from me that every year he does it. And he does it within the, the confinements of the ordinance, and he's, and he's great about it. Um, you know, it's, again, it's one of those instances where it's, you don't want to take away stuff when you've got a couple bad apples from people that are, that are actually following the letter of the law. So I, it's a tough position. I, I guess I'd offer a couple of observations. Yeah. You're always going to have bad apples. Even yeah. if we didn't make this lawful, it will happen, maybe to a lesser extent. But nonetheless, I suggest that there'll be some happen. number of bad apples that still exist in society. Um, what I, you know, what was talked about quite uh, in depth at the time is uh, the density issue and, and trying to come up with ways to look at minimum lot size. The real challenge with that is one, to make sure it's simple enough for people to understand can I do it on my property or not? Right. And if we get into 10,000 square feet or less, it right. really gets complicated. And I think it makes the enforcement that much oh, more yeah. watered down, frankly. Yeah. Um, the only way that I could see that this would be workable is to make it real simple. like east of the turnpike, west of the turnpike, things um. that people can, landmarks that people can immediately understand. Uh, and that's the broad brush approach, for sure, that, that arguably restricts the majority of the population. Yeah. Not, not by acreage, but by yeah. population. Most of us live on this side of the turnpike. I think one of the things that uh, uh, really affects this is the basically the three beach communities that we have in town yeah. are primarily rental properties in right. the summertime. That's right. And these people come in from out of state, they pass by the fireworks store, they buy fireworks, and even though they're given the information, mm -hmm. maybe they don't really fully know what the regulations are. Well, they don't care. They're on vacation. Or they they're on vacation. vacation. And some of them, like I said, it's a family tradition for them. So you know, I mean, um, I know that we opened the last um, I'm going to go off script because I, I love doing that. I'm sure everybody's noticed that by now. Um, we opened the last, the last um, issue that we talked about to the public. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this issue? Speak can now I, or forever hold your peace. Can, can I make just make yes. a recommendation that, yes. that we put this on the next agenda with a, a public uh, yeah. hearing? Yeah, absolutely. To, to get input? Yeah, that would be good. That would yeah. be real good. Can check this around any further? Absolutely. I would love to do that. 
I'd love to hear from people from different areas of Scarborough. Yeah. You know? And I would encourage um, anybody <clears throat> that's listening, I know we get a lot of, amazingly enough, we get a lot of people that watch this on TV, um, and anyone in the audience, I would encourage your neighbors to, if they have a real issue with this, either email. And I would email, um, don't hesitate to email the full council. Um, they know what we're talking about, um, and they may have ideas that they'll send on to us that we might not even have thought about. Um, but if it's, a, if it's an issue for you in your area, I would encourage you to um, send those to us. And if you have ideas on ways for us to maybe rein some of this in, we'll take those too, because you never know. I mean, the best idea we could get could come from a citizen. Um, this is a new, this, talking about this is new. I mean, um, we just started this dialogue. So um, I would hope that, I would love to have more input from people. So we'll put that, Tracy, can, can we put that on there? And then, is there any way for us to, um, yeah, is there, can we put that on the town website that we're going to be discussing it? Like maybe a little bit more broader than um, for someone to click on the ordinance agenda? Is that yeah, possible? We'll, we'll put something on, we have kind of a news feed uh, on the website. It, it, of course, requires people to get on and yeah. get interested in looking, but yeah. uh, we'll, but we can also we'll give it the top our, billing we can. Absolutely, yeah. on our Facebook Jean Marie and I can also okay. put it out there, too. Um, public safety Facebook pages are pretty yeah, widely yeah, read. Yeah, so I'll let them know. Jamie can probably mm -hmm. get it yeah. out of the course. I can't put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't even have a, you don't even have a cell phone. Councilor Blaze doesn't even have a cell phone. Um, anyway, What's yes. What's the date of the next word? It's great um, to let people know. Uh, Tracy, it's the third. It's, a, it's supposed to be the third Thursday. I mean, the third Tuesday. Some of the months, though, they, we had to go out to right. the fourth because they were busy. So our next meeting is August 18th. August 18th. So August 18th is our next ordinance meeting. It'll be at 9:30. And, um, and that is the third um, Tuesday of August. Just so people know. Just for clarity, um, we're calling it a public hearing. We're not going to notice it as such. Uh, it doesn't have any effect. It, I mean, this is a committee of the council. You're not in the adoption process, but no, we'll do I was our best just to publicize. Exactly. The I, just, I just want people yep. to understand that we're talking about it and. Want to hear this? Give right. us feedback. Yep. Sometimes we don't use we we use the words that we associate with getting the, the public council. here. Yeah, because we are counselors. Well. Um, okay. Item six, adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor. The vote. August eighteenth. Yes, nine thirty.